This information is of a general nature only and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation or needs. You should consider the product disclosure statement, which you have in your hot little hands, issued by Plantation Capital Limited in deciding whether to acquire an interest in the passive income USA Commercial Property Fund. Past performance is not a guarantee of future performance. No earnings estimates are made. So what's on offer for tonight? I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction, starting in a minute or two. I'll then move straight on and talk about the first part of the property fund that I've set up. Uncle Zally, Stu Silver. I've flown Stu over from the United States of America. Stu's a professional property investor, owns 800 rental properties. And the reason why I've flown Stu all the way out from America is I want him to talk to you about the sorts of opportunities that are on offer in the United States right now. I'll come back after that, provide a little bit more information about the fund and nitty-gritty of it. There'll be time for Q&A, and then we've got another half an hour of drinks at the end of it. So if you'd like to hang around and have another glass of wine or an orange juice or something else, you're absolutely more than welcome. Now, before we get started, can I see a show of hands of who's read my first book from 0 to 130 properties in 3.5 years? Fantastic. All right. Can the people who haven't read it stand up? So if you haven't read my first book, all right, stand up. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for being honest. Um, the lady in the, in the, with the scarf around your neck, can I ask you a question? Would you characterise yourself as an action taker? All right. Tony, would you characterise yourself as an action taker? All right, you don't sound certain enough. Do you characterise yourself as an action taker? That's still not certain enough. Is there anyone here who's a really an action taker? Absolutely. All right, that, that's a bit more like it. All right, so I have uh, a copy of my book that I would like to give away if, if someone's an action taker and would come and take it. All right, so Tony, good man, uh, let me sign it for you. Uh, uh, Tony got here first. There you go, mate. Congratulations. Now, I've got one more copy of my book that I'll give away, hopefully, you can sit down, that's all right, at some point during the night. What I've come to realise through the course of over 10 years of investing is it's the action takers who make the money. And it's the people who sit on the sidelines watching the action takers who end up frustrated and disappointed. Now, had you have read my book, like the majority of the people in the room, here's what you might be saying that when you read about those cheap, positive cash flow properties I was buying back in 1999, 2000, 2001, that you regret missing out. Or alternatively, you might be saying you now feel locked out because property prices have risen so much. Or you might be saying, oh, you know, this all sounds really good, but I can't find any positive cash flow properties. Who's in that boat? Guys, most of the room. And if you're interested in positive cash flow, you're being told the merits of going out into places that no one really wants to live, but because they're getting paid so much money to have a big quarry in the ground, that they're paying thousands of dollars a week in rent, so it seems to justify that that's where the positive cash flow properties are. Places like Port Hedland, where properties are over a million dollars, or Moorinbar or Blackwater. 20 years ago, places where you could have bought a house for $10,000, $20,000. I personally wouldn't be buying properties that are only positive cash flow on the basis of a mining boom, because all booms must end sooner or later. Or people are telling me that they're worried they don't have the skills to succeed with investing. Now, quick poll. Hands up, who would buy positive cash flow property if they could easily find it? Who'd be in? All right, so I don't need to convince you on the merits of positive cash flow property. There you go. Perfect. So let me introduce you to what's going on here. In May 1999, this is a picture of the very first property that I ever bought. May 1999. 
And I, and I paid $44,000 for this property, which seemed like quite a lot of money at the time, forty-four grand, And it provided me with a 14% gross return. And when I bought this property, my family and my friends all said, Steve, you're mad. You shouldn't be buying property in the country. They thought Ballarat was the country. You'll never get capital appreciation. Oh, what kind of tenant would a property like that attract? You're going to be having all these tenant problems. That same property today is worth over $120,000. So it's tripled in value. Let me show you in November 2009 a picture of the very first property in the US that I bought. Now, which one do you think is a better property? <laughs> All right, this is a duplex. So this is two properties. November 2009. I paid $12,500 for that property. And then I had to spend another $12,700 renovating it. Because I, even I have certain standards that I like to uphold in my rental properties. 38% gross return. And you know what people said? You're not just mad, you're completely mad. Buying in another country, imagine all the things that could go wrong. And then when people knew where that area was, they said, you're crazy, no one should be buying here. That property today, a year and a bit on, a couple of years on, now worth 45 grand, doubled in value. So what are people saying now? They're saying, oh, you're, you got lucky. Or they say, oh, I wish I had a got in. Because these opportunities aren't available anymore. You can't buy $44,000 properties in Ballarat. You can't buy $12,500 duplexes in Fort Myers, Florida, where that property is. You can't do that anymore. These properties don't exist. You missed the boat, guys. It's, it's gone. It's history. Good case studies. Like, oh, if only I had have done something. If only I had have got in. Well, they say it's not fair. I'm too busy, poor, dumb, bald, whatever. People come up with all these excuses all the time about why they keep missing the boat. And the truth of the matter is people miss the boat because they are not action takers. The real question people should be asking, in my opinion, is when's it going to be my turn? When's it going to be my turn? So are there any action takers in the room? Okay. Call me cheesy, but I came up with this little ticket. And on it, it says, your ticket to financial freedom. And it says, admit one. It's a cheesy marketing tool, let me be honest. And on it, it says, name, which would be your name, not my name. Today's date, in case you've forgotten, it's the 18th of July. And it says a money goal. Now, your money goal is something small that you would like to achieve financially between now and the end of the year. Whatever. It's up to you. It's not for me. And then it says time goal. So I've said end of the year, but you might say a month or two months or anything else like that. I have one of these sitting on my computer screen at work that says debt-free by the end of this year. Now, are there any action takers in the room that would like one of these? Then I'm not coming to you. Marky Mark? Twenty, nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Now, an important point demonstrated right there. Even if it's free, some people are still wondering, where's the catch? I wouldn't, I wouldn't 
push myself so low as to get up out of my seat and come and get it. Or I've got no chance of getting one of them, so I won't even try it. We'll see how we go later on. So what held you back? Because I've been talking about this positive cash flow thing for like over a decade now, and I've been talking about investing in the US for over two years now. I've been saying to people, this won't last. Get in, get in quick. Prices are going to go up. I'd be like, oh, yeah, whatever, McKnight. So what held you back? Was it because you didn't know about it? Or that when you finally did know about it, it was too late, the opportunity had gone? Or is it because you didn't have money at the time? Or you didn't have time at the time to do something about it? It was too hard. Oh, who knows how to invest in Ballarat or the United States? Oh, oh, don't, oh I'll just stick with my job. Or you're afraid. You're stuck in the side of life which is where everything can go wrong. Or you were going to do it. No, I should have done this, I should have done that. You know, should, should, should. People should all over themselves all the time. You don't want to be doing that. So let me cut to the chase, right? Because some of you might want to go early once I've finished in the next couple of minutes and offended you. Let me just cut to the chase, just so everyone in the room can hear it. I reckon that people want to say this to me, but they're just not brave enough. Steve, I don't want to read your stupid book. And I don't want to go to your stupid seminar. Take me to the mine. Can you say that? Say it. Take me to the mine. Just take me to the mine, Steve. I'm a busy person. I don't have a lot of time. Take me to the mine. And when we get there, I want you to find the deal, Steve. And I want you to make the profit for me. And then I want you to bank it for me too. And if I could do all that, would you still take action? Take me to the mine, Steve. You know, it really kills me that even if I did that, people would still say, no. Nah. So in a nutshell, what I've done is I've created a property fund for the last two years. It's taken me two years to get this off the ground. You wouldn't believe the amount of regulation and compliance associated with this. To go and buy quality US, not those properties I showed you before, quality US commercial property in major metro areas, Texas, Georgia and Florida. With, this, is, this isn't made up positive cash flow. You know, you hear this positive gearing, you know, certain properties that are marketed as positively geared are really negatively geared, but they're positively geared after tax write-offs and this kind of stuff. That's all rubbish. This is genuine positive cash flow. Impressive growth upside. I mean, what else do you want out of a property? Positive cash flow with growth upside. That's all anyone should want. In fact, people are happy with the growth upside and negative cash flow. So, you know, I've always said, why would you want negative when you could have positive? There was a real estate agent called Crackers back in the early day, back in Ballarat, who came out to show me some property. And he said, Steve, you seem to be a smart guy. Tell me about real estate investing. I said, well, there's positive gearing, there's negative gearing. Here's how it works. He goes, whoa, 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 what are you talking about? I said, well, what do you mean, Crackers? He goes, you don't need to tell me any more. I said, what? He goes, well... Surely a positive is better than a negative. I thought, wow, this kid's picked it up so quick. Amazing. You don't have to worry about the management. It's taken care of. You can invest with as little as $10,000, which is the minimum investment. And you don't have to borrow any money. You don't have to qualify for a loan. There's no stamp duty you need to pay. How much stamp duty do you pay if you buy a property in Australia for 500 grand, do you think? Thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. You don't even have to pay that. There's no stamp duty when you buy on US properties. So how does all this work? Have I got your attention? All right, do me a favour. If you're interested at this point in time, just humour me and say, take me to the mine. Take me to the mine. Take me to the mine. To the action takers.